Well, guess what? It's Sunday. That means it's time to do another video. Um, I realized how on the uh, tour, I really I shortchanged uh, the vocalion and you viewers by not really demonstrating the vocalion stop by stop. So hey, here we are. Um, Going to go through. Um, start on the grate anyway. My favorite stop on the grate is a stop dive bass, and it's a really beautiful flute sound. It's a uh, uh, really warm, um, extremely round, has a nice little really nice flutey attack to it, as a matter of fact. Who knows how they constructed the uh, reeds, uh, resonators to give it that great flute sound and that little attack. Um, so anyway, that's stop diapason. The next stop I will demonstrate is open diapason. Um, this one is, you know, you think open diapason is going to be great diapason-y sound. It's actually kind of a I don't know, it strikes me as a little odd. And then compare it again to the stopped. It's really smooth. This is a little more brightness and edge, but one of my uh, pals who's a you know a professional organist and uh, church musician and professor of organ, he said it's more clarinetty. But we can't complain. It's here. It's it's a nice big sound. It combines with the stopped, and you get a great full. at eight foot, so it's, that's, it's, it's good. Okay, no complaint. Third stop on the grate is Dulciana. The previous two stops were the large-scale vocalion reeds that are, you know, enormous. They're um, three-quarter or seven-eighth inch wide frames, whatever, and the reeds are very broad, broad. This Dulciana is um, a three-eighth inch wide ordinary parlor organ scale of reed with a narrow little tongue, very, they're short, they're narrow, they belong in a parlor organ, yet somehow, this is one of the cool, really two coolest stops I guess on the organ, because here's how this one sounds. Um, Perfect. It's a great duplicate of the what you want on the pipe organ for Dulciana. It's soft. It's small scale. Uh, it has this. I really hope the camera picks this up. I might have to bring the camera closer so it picks up the uh, the, the wind noise that this has. Um, let me get right in here, and hopefully you can hear this. I'll aim the thing. Hopefully the microphone serves directional. I'm aim the microphone right up here. I'll just play this a little bit. Um. It actually has a breathy quality to it. Just, just the 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 organist who's played this. He said that's you know that's a you can't tell that from pipes, and it's just what you want to balance out the. Um, great big sounds that this organ has is something, you know, something in a small scale. Now, fourth stop, final stop on the grate is called harmonic flute. It's a four foot stop. That means it sounds an octave higher than the normal unison. And it's a, uh, this is a, another stop that uses the really large scale reeds and it's extremely bright. So P 
piercing as a matter of fact that I really couldn't stand to play it. And when I was tuning, it actually made my ears ring because it's so penetrating. <laughs> Occasionally, when you want a very full organ sound, is the only time I really draw it. Um, but because I put some additional uh, cloth behind the regular grill cloth on this, and that just kind of brought the whole organ down a notch volume wise. The other thing that would bring the not organ down a notch volume wise would be to um, take the two, I don't know, they're about 20 pounds a piece, 15 pounds a piece two cast iron weights off of the bellows. And that also really softens it pretty nicely. Taking one weight off, in fact, just taking 15 pounds off of the reservoir softens it beautifully. And it still allows the, the harmonic flute is really strange because I found when I took both weights off of the bellows, it would, it would squawk, it wouldn't speak because it really, it, in fact, needs a super high pressure to, to develop its sound and actually to speak because that's the way they voiced it in the the, the reed cells and the resonators that are behind it won't, don't even allow it to speak properly at low pressure. So it needs this you know, incredible amount of pressure behind it to work. Um, but taking one weight off, 15, about 15 pounds, 16 pounds, I don't know what they weigh. The weights are about, I don't know, they're as long as the reservoir, so they're about 15 inches. They're about three quarters of an inch thick and three and a half inches across, three inches across. They're pretty darn heavy. So taking one off, let it speak right, but then unfortunately I had tuned it, at, I had tuned this organ with both of those weights in place, and then it was out of tune, so that couldn't be, so I had to, and I wasn't gonna retune it, obviously. Um, so I ended up putting a piece of carpeting behind this thing, and that muffles it enough a little bit, and um, it helps. So anyway, there's the grate. So any of the full grate together really, the full grate doesn't, really need the dulciana, doesn't quite add. The dulciana adds, if you have one eight foot stop, you can hear bringing the dulci that's bringing the dulciana on. So dulciana off, then I'll bring it on. It, that was with the open diapason. Then the bringing on the stop diapason and then adding the dulciana. That makes great sense and it really uh, rounds out the sound of either of those other eight foot stops. But it, you, you can't hear it over the harmonic flute. Well, you can't hear yourself think over the harmonic flute. So there's the full grate, and I'll throw in the pedal note and do, you know. sound you get is based on how many stops that you pull out and you can make it only softer and louder by starting with a soft stop
Gamba. Very nice, very nice set. Uh, they did a terrific job on it. It's the wide reeds, the, the big vocalion reeds, wide frames, but the tongues themselves are about two-thirds of the width, so they're a narrower scale. So you get the power from the big reeds, but you get a, a keener tone, more overtones, because they're narrow. When a tongue is narrow, it doesn't just move up and down as you would expect a reed tongue to move in the frame to make the vibration, but it, it introduces a little bit of more sideways movement. So it's oscillating a little bit sideways as it's vibrating up and down, and that those odd Vibrations develop the greater uh, the part the partial harmonic overtones. So that's why it's not it's not round like the, the stop die bass. It's got a little bit more overtone and it's a little keener. And they size the resonators and they size the hole that the sound ultimately comes out of in the resonator very large so that it's as bright and powerful as anything on the grate, and, and more so. But uh, when you swell it down, close the swell on it, you get... It, you, you get a great contrast between louder, softer, different, uh, different tone quality. So it's Gamba favorite. The second eight foot stop on the, on the swell is the oboe. This again, this is the other stop on the organ that, similar to the Dulciana, uses narrow, ordinary parlor organ scale reeds with very narrow tongues. The, the tongues are narrower, I think, and especially down in the bass register, they're, they're narrower and, and smaller. <laughs> against its rotation. So if you play a big chord, you'll slow the, the, the fan down to where it just about stops. But with one note, or just... With one or two notes, you can keep the fan spinning. playing because it just choruses a little bit against the, the other eight foot stops on the grate if you're happen to be playing it together. But since the gamba and the oboe are came, coming out of the same swell chamber, the, the effect is just a little bit more. So now, since this organ didn't have any celeste stops, I kind of created one if you have the gamba and oboe together. <laughs> get a nice get a nice celeste so there's gamba by itself at the oboe nice little bit of wah 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 on that so anyway that was a little 
little improvement that I saw that I could make to correct uh, a, a perceived deficiency in this, that there's no Celestes. The third stop that I'll demonstrate on the swell is the flute de moor. And that, blessedly, is a, a perfect little wood flute at four foot. And um, that, again, is another case where they used smaller scale reeds and smaller scale sound holes to just sort of restrict the amount of sound that can ultimately come out of it. And that's really great sound. You can combine that sort of with the gong. And the, when you add the fan, tremulant to that. really 
an octave higher. <laughs> seven eighths of an inch wide and Mason and Hamlin will be uh, five eighth or three quarter inch wide, can't really remember. Um, but this one starts out with inch and three quarter wide reed frames for the lowest notes. And then at somewhere it scales to um, inch and three eighths, I guess. down a little bit further to um, probably inch and an eighth for the, for the top so there's actually three different scales of reed frame in this I guess I, it's kind of clever I mean it got them to be able to really compact the pedal chest and fit it because if they'd used the inch and three quarter reeds frames for the whole thing it, I guess it wouldn't fit so it, it's a you know another curiosity about the way it is the vocalion. So that's the soft, that's the soft. This is called pedal double diaphase, and it's just the same reeds. They're just 
open a volume shade, and I and uh, that's about it. I think that it uses the same I think it uses the same valve to open the wind to the reeds. <laughs> structure of the reed cells and resonators. So some of the resonators on this aren't sealed, which means that the wind leaks out when it should be coming completely through the resonator. Some of the wind escapes through the crack, which is why I'm guessing that some of the notes are much louder. Refelting the key, the pedal keyboard, um, but it's not exactly felt. It's felt, and the felt is wrapped or padded on top with leather. So it's like a re-leathering and refelting of the um, the keys, which is why they're they have noise. They have tracker noise anyway, and that's not going anywhere. You can't get rid of that. But there's a bit of slop and noise in the key, just in the keyboard right here up front, where it really is kind of annoying if you can actually play, which I can't, so it's it's one of those things that kind of gets backburnered until it gets so bad I, even I can't stand it. But I only play this thing about a couple times a month because um, it's kind of it's a little intimidating to sit at and play. Um, so I figure, there you go, that's pretty much all the stops on the organ have been duly uh, demonstrated and shown their advantages and limitations, and so thanks for watching.